hello hello everyone how are you hope all is well i swear 2023 was a test but 2024 is going to be the year when many lessons will be learned because i bet my last dollar that jalan silvera never ever expected in 2024 he would be behind bars or even arrested what never happened in years can happen in a day however this jalan silvera case in which he is charged with the murder of his wife melissa silvera is panning out to be one hell of a case when you look at the length that jalan silvera and his co-conspirators went through to cover melissa's murder this will go down as one for the history books of jamaica and i don't know how those people sleep at night time they must take a lot of medication or drink a lot of alcohol if they have any heart at all because people who are part of the people's national party are being questioned who were on the scene who visited the house and at least two specific members of the pmp is being interrogated one is former pmp mp richard parchment he is to be interrogated by the police and the pnp vice president mp for northwest manchester Michael Phillip are some of the main people who visited the bloody crime scene early on the scene at Melissa's matrimonial home in Stony Hill after Melissa was murdered. Michael Phillips have already given a statement to the police but will be among those that will be interrogated by detective from the JCF Major Investigation Division, MID. However, this case broke when the PMP President Mark Golin was the one who first disclosed on the 11th of November 2023 the death of Melissa via his social media page. He expressed condolences to Jalan Silver on the passing of his wife, Melissa. Then, on December the 16th, he amended his post of condolences to Jalan to instead condolences to the Silvera family. By then, it had been revealed that she died of gunshot wounds and not died peacefully in her sleep, as it was first said. The police then started a murder probe into the incident. It is also understood that the wife of a senior opposition legislature who was on the crime scene have spoken with the police and is cooperating with the investigators. It's further understood that Silvera is also to be charged with corruption and tampering with evidence charges which police investigators suspect to be one big elaborate cover-up of the brutal killing of his wife as the police investigators are probing the tampering of silvera's gun which alleges the barrel of silvera's license firearm was altered after the murder so that it would not match the bullets that killed his wife but almost, but that never worked. There were certain markings that could just not be altered. He must have gotten help to do that. To come up with ways to alter the gun so it don't match the bullets that killed his wife. Who is the person that did it? Because I know it's not him do it himself. I think that. Even that should be illegal to be done. And anyone who helped him in that way need to be arrested also for diverting the course of justice or accessory to the fact. 
So now, Jalan Silveira is being further investigated in connection with this tampering of his weapon. Which still never worked out for him because the police hit a breakthrough in the case when unique markings on a bullet that was found inside Mistress Silveira corresponded with records stored at the Firearm Licensing Authority, FLA, which outlined particulars of the weapon that was assigned to Mr. Silveira. So that would be additional criminal charges. Can you just imagine how much crime and how much stuff like this have gone down in Jamaica where people just died in them sleep and in some even more elaborate cases people probably got killed on the road or something when really and truly connected right to your yard probably your own loved ones no man it's frightening the thought DPP Paula Lowelling's office is expected to issue a voluntary bill of indictment transferring the Silvera murder case from the first mentioned court in Alfred Tree to the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston. Can you believe it? In all this evidence and all that is said, Jolan Silvera is still denying that he did any wrongdoing. This man and my heart look like he weird on them foot bottom. You see, that is why this wicked man never wanted no autopsy and pushed the narrative of how she died peacefully in her sleep. Then, on top of that, he was pushing so hard for her to be cremated. That's why he and the Marg was in such loggerheads because there are people who are saying no and he was saying yes. This is just so heartbreaking, you know? Very disappointing. Imagine if he had gotten his way incriminating her. That would have been the finality of all evidence. There would be no way to connect anything because remember, you know, him done basically throughout everything from the room that would have been connected to be of any evidence in a chair, bed, wall, cap. The man all dig up the whole of the tile them in the room and change them. That means that, uh, you know, some tire this they could grow within the tile in case by chance any little bloody go down in any of them, them grove there. And not only that, you know, a friend of mine was telling me that, you know, sometime after you clean out blood out of a ear and no matter how you clean it, there's a certain kind of chemical that they can use with a certain kind of light that can pick up blood even months after to show you so the man did properly I check out him thing. The man said before that catch him, the man dig up every tile in the room and change it, you know. It's not even a joke. And put fresh tile in a man. Totally, extensively reconstruct the place, you know, so... There would be no evidence to be found in about a year of this. And now a man say, our God say, and Melissa would have to get justice. You understand? I don't know what's going to happen in the court case eventually. But right now, it is out there. We all know worldwide what went down. Such wickedness, evilness, and heartlessness. You want to bet just maybe she had gotten tired of the alleged abuse and wanted out but he can't afford to lose her and her money because remember you know despite them status and all that you know we might be just looking on and seeing the glamour and the glitter when really and truly them have more money problems more than NCB Bank. Coupled with the fact that Melissa's mother recently passed and Melissa was her only child and her mother was real rich and eventually everything would have come to Melissa. Included any life insurance policies. Plus remember you know, 
Melissa in a job in a she a top woman a petrol jam you know. So you never see smoke without fire. We may not learn every details of what exactly caused this. But I'm telling you the most important thing we want, we want justice for her. And this investigation seemingly could re reveal many things. Because when you think about it, who have money woes and money problems more than land developers? And that's what Jolan Silvera did. However, police are dismissing claims that Jolan Silvera is getting preferential treatment as several detainees at the Kingston Central Police lockup are threatening to stage a riot as Silvera is getting special treatment and special sleeping comforts when he's also a criminal in their eyes so the other inmates is not having it so guess what they moved him up to the JDF compound where there you definitely won't know are able to see the kind of treatment he's getting there and he can continue to get his royal treatment now here it is again that he is getting special treatment as his first court date the media and all family members are barred from the case. Vinette Graham Allen, the judge in the court case, barred everyone, including family members, and said she may allow them in some day. At the beginning of the court case, everyone was asked to wait outside. Then after Jalan Silvera entered, along with quite a few top tier lawyers the courtroom was closed off and police officers placed at the entrance the judge further stated that she will not permit coverage of the case to everyone shock as this is a host historic move by a judge can you just imagine if Jalan Silvier was Prime Minister? Well, just maybe he would not be charged then because so much preferral treatment is going on in this case. Well, if this is not corruption and bias in high places, well, I don't know what is. However, it's her courtroom. She can do anything. But why is Jalan Silvera not being treated like the criminal he is like any other criminal it don't look good to the world looking on at this it look away and as for the naysayers yes you a man is innocent until proven guilty yeah same goes to all the other criminals in the lockup them all innocent until they are proven guilty but we expect the same treatment for all of them. What many of these people don't understand, you know, is that this kind of thing, the youths are looking on. And they are noticing what is going on in the society. And things like these is what let them lose respect for authority. And as I said, things like these, is some of the reasons why the use them is not taking no talk from anyone in authority because for many wrong is right depends on who is doing it Sylvia arrived at the courthouse just a little bit after 2 p.m. yesterday in handcuff along with other criminals decked out in his blue shirt and brown shoes and of a shirt threw over him head, you know, kind of hiding the face. Director of Public Prosecution, DPP, Paula Llewellyn, arrived at the courthouse at approximately 2.35 p.m. and expressed shock that the media and family members were locked out. She then said the matter is of high public interest before she entered the courtroom. I guess she couldn't really say anything else, can she?
because it's the judge that made that decision but she was equally shocked like everyone else however the prosecutor is awaiting the ballistic file to determine when to make a bail application so no allegations have been read out at least on this first sitting of the court after court Silvera was whisked away as family and friends shouted after him as a people we really need to pay attention to this case as the judge appears to be making her rules as she goes along and we need full transparency in this case like any other Jolan Silvera is not special more than anyone else he is just a criminal like the rest and should sh and should be treated so the only difference is that he has more links with the right people which says a lot about the character of those same people now his attorney at law peter champigny is pleading with the public to consider the young children who have been affected in the Jolan Silvera matter. I think he should save that for his client and ask his client why he never took into consideration his own children, how all this and the loss of their mother would affect them. However, Champagne is also saying he is not saying that he is innocent but he is saying that everyone have the right for a defense. He have a valuable point because he's a lawyer, but he has changed a bit since the last comments he made. Just bear in mind, you know, if it wasn't for social media sticking out on this case, this case, where would it be right now? I doubt we would have gotten this far the old world jamaicans in jamaica and that are spread across the world got involved what these people not understand you know really and truly not don't know they again you know people who don't understand certain things they go after technology and what you may find is that you have a lot of people that may not be academically advanced but when it got down to intelligence remember man not even the judge have nothing on top of most of these people and remember jamaican people when it comes down to be cunning and slick that is something that we know a lot about because of how hard it is for us to survive in this country so when you come in to try to trick jamaicans you better come good unless that person really want to be tricked and don't matter and don't really care so we on social media will be keeping at it until we get justice for melissa silvera however jalan silvera will return to court on february 8 2024 i'm so looking forward to that i wonder what will the judge be thinking of next but here it is now ministry of legal affairs and you know who in charge of that marlene malahu forte because she's the minister of legal and constitutional affairs she too has made her voice heard for what could be the reason given for the decision to bar the media from covering the initial court appearance of former West St. Mary MP Jalan Silvera. Writing on the social media platform X, the minister noted that as a general rule, the Jamaican's constitution mandates that all proceedings of every court should be held in public. I'm telling you, say, this judge, I don't know who she is or how she connected possibly to the case, but she was making up her rules as she go along, which could not have been right. Anyway, let me continue. Minister Malahu Forte said, 
the court may consider the extent to which publicity would prejudice the interests of justice. But she says in such a case, reasons should be given. Jamaicans across social media have been critical of the decision to bar the media from covering Silvera's first court appearance. There have also been calls for the decision to be reversed and for the judge Vinnett Graham Allen to recuse herself. I think so too. I think a different judge should be assigned to the case. Because with everybody going against what she said, I don't think she can be trusted in the eyes of the public based on what she did. Anyway guys, let me chat in the comment section what you think will happen next. What you think about this case. Do you think the case would have gone this far without social media intervention? Me personally, I don't think so. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Anyway guys, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my platform please. Love you all. Bye for now.